Welcome to the Kerbal Broadcast Channel. This is Kerbalized Realism, and I'm your host, Foxworth the Human. We bring you continued coverage of 1956. On June 12th, early flight control was unlocked. They get eight parts for 14,000 curtain bucks. As Jeb gets ready for possibly the CAX 1's final flight, as construction begins on the new K Wing class. With the K Wing 1R, it'll take 242 days to build that jump with the KX 1. Simply needing to take off, no air drop this time, climb to 33 and a half kilometers, and land anywhere. Which he's good at because he's never landed on the runway yet. The plan is head north from the Cape. Hopefully come down at Langlair Wallops. Actually land on the runway. But he makes his turn to the north. Begins his climb. And oh no. Uh, engine failure. Only managing around 10,000 meters. Nowhere near his 33 and a half kilometers. But good thing he isn't very far. Maybe he can pull off a real landing. But the air brakes seem to have been locked on. And by the time Jeb realizes it, it's a little too late. And he comes up short of the runway once again. After a second true flying wing design is released, known as the K Batwing, the K Wing 1R is renamed the K Delta R2. Vale and the Sparrow on the 22nd of June, maintaining a speed of 825 meters per second for three minutes and flying to sector NZRT for a crew report. June 27th. 1956 to 57 orbital rocketry, 1956 to 57 solid rocket engines, high speed flight, and hypersonic flight are all queued up for unlocking. August 23rd, the second PK 9000's construction is finished, and a 12 day rollout begins. Five days later, Lunar Range Communications Tech unlocks. Oof, that was a toughie giving the Kerbals Comtech 1 and the ability to start upgrading the tracking station with 18 new parts for 43,000 curb bucks and then 50,000 more for the tracking station upgrade boosting the DSN to 8.41 G's and allowing patch conics taking 65 days September 5th from the Cape just in case of a parachute failure like last time. They don't want to be dropping the second PK-9000 on anyone. It's time for launch. Sent on a northeasterly course to head up the east coast but still stay way out in the Atlantic just in case. It should get some real nice photos of the east coast. A perfect fairing separation. Nominal booster separation, setting up for re-entry. There's a sight those Kerbals were hoping for. The parachutes did in fact deploy this time. As R2-D2 descends through the clouds. I can't believe I didn't think of that either. Tell me that does not look like r 2 d But look at that image in the background too. Oh, it's just amazing. Ooh, when I heard the sound of the parachutes fully deploying. As it comes in and safely splashes down. The low space film return. Excellent! Both the media and our scientists will be excited to see these lovely shots. With the final low space film return having a height requirement of 140 kilometers. They also grab 
crossing the belt just in case. The Kerblin engineers begin construction of the Kixpolar 1 to be the first orbital satellite finishing out 1956. The tracking station upgrade is done November 3rd with 1956 to 1957 orbital rocketry finishing two days later on the 5th. Unlocking 13 more parts for 28,000 more curb books. We will see you next time in 1957. Signing off. This has been a KBC new special. And I'm Foxworth Human. Goodbye.